Jesus Christ. What's going on guys? I'm Dan. This is Flawed Off-Road. That's my 91 YJ and we're gonna work on this screwed up steering because this thing is turning like a school bus and I want to fix it. So what we have is a Dana 44. This is out of a 78 Ford F250. This is the heavy duty version. So it's the three quarter ton eight lug version. And I have these reed knuckles. What's going on here is I actually cannot hit my steering locks. And I've like, I've moved this around. I've tried longer pitman arms over here. And so what I figured out is that I'm actually hitting the steering stop on the back, but I'm not coming close on the front. And that's because of the Ackerman angle, one tire turns more than the other. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna drop this tie rod off of here and we're just gonna see how far this knuckle will turn when I turn the wheel and I jack it up. We're gonna try it in this hole and then we're gonna try it in this hole. And if it goes far enough in this hole, then I'm gonna move the tie rod up here where this is at, get both links up above there and hopefully this thing will turn better, handle better. And then I get to figure out how to put my hydro assist way up there, which will be fun. That's kind of the whole point of this is I want to get hydro assist and I want to get this thing steering right first so that the Ram's not like forcing things where they don't need to be. So let's get going. Okay, so I got the wheels off the ground, the tie rods off. We're going to go cycle the steering and see what we get. Okay, so that feels kind of like I'm hitting knuckle stop and not steering box stop. So let's go take a look. Oh yeah, hitting right there. Actually, I could probably just steer this out here by myself. Look at that, we're hitting both stops. So it is that Ackerman angle that was keeping me from getting to that front stop. So now I'm gonna move this up to that hole. And if I can still make it from stop to stop, then we're gonna move the tie rod up and put it right there. Had to go find the Jeep tool back to get to the good stuff. I need one of those little three eighths to half inch. There we go. That's the one I want. Oh wow. Steering box goes way farther than the fucking arm. I don't know, I might end up having to put that shorter pitman arm back on there, but for now we're gonna hold these in as much as I can and see what we get. I had to go on a little goose chase to find my big old crescent wrench. Well, that tells you right there that the steering box still has more swing than what this is gonna allow. I mean, I can just push it over and drop it in. And we'll hit the stops, but the steering box won't hit the relief. Hmm, gotta think about this. So I ran these babies in as far as they would go, and I still can't max out the steering box before the knuckles hit. So my choices are to either go to the shorter, back to the stock pitman arm, which won't give me quite as much steering angle, but if it can still reach the stops, I don't care. Option B is to grind off some of these nubs on the reed knuckles, and a lot of people do that, and that way this will extend further, because if you look, if I pull this all the way over, that's where the steering box ends, and that's farther than this will go. So I either have to relieve that or go back to the shorter arm. Okay, so now this is in the other direction. I got the pitman arm all the way turn driver, and I got the same thing. This won't quite reach because that stop down there is hitting. So I think I'm actually gonna just grind some of these away. Let's just hop into the box of wonders and see what we got. All right, so here's some equipment arms I have. I think this is the one I want. I think that's the one I've got drilled out already. Yeah, this is a drop arm and it's still tapered. Anybody needs a 231 uh, yoke for a SYE 1310. Grandma driven, never been wheeled, I promise. All right, guys, I'm gonna try to put the old stock pitman arm back on. It's already drilled out for these heim joints. So I have to at least check this and see if it's gonna make the trip. Last time when I put this on here, I was able to get the stock one off just with pry bars, but fuck if this one's gonna come off that way. So I gotta run and get pitman arm polar. Well, my arsenal of junk here wasn't enough to get that off of there. So we went to the OOO O'Reilly's and picked up a pitman arm polar.
The sucker's getting a little deformed, but I got it off of there. We're gonna slap it on here and see what we get out of this. So I'm not gonna fully tighten this up. I'm just gonna snug it up a little bit. And then we're gonna slap that steering link on there and see what happens. We're just kinda ghettoing this up there for right now. Don't judge, it's zip tied on there. I mean the bolts is, but there's a zip tie holding it up because I didn't feel like running the nut all the way down. So we've got it steered all the way passenger and I've got these threaded all the way in. So this is as short as it gets, but check this out. It's pretty much right there. In fact, it will go through. I could grind these a little bit and get it a little bit farther and then run these threads out, which I probably actually will do. But what this tells me is that I can max out and get to my steering stops with this shorter arm and that is going to help with packaging a lot. The whole steering box is going forward an inch which will help too. And then the tie rod's just going to live right here right behind this all the way across and I got to throw the other high steer arm on yet. I'm going to steer this thing the other way real quick and see if this front stop hits when the pit arm's all the way that way. And there it is, we're touching. So let me pull this out of here and see how much farther I can push it. That's it, the box is messed, so this is like perfect. So my arm's got these spacers here, so I have these special long studs and two of them are fouled out. So for now, it's held on there solid with two, but I gotta replace these two. So what I'm doing here is I'm just gonna lightly put this back on there so that I have an approximate location of the tires so I can measure for that new tie rod. This will get me in the ballpark. Now we can set those joints up here in this hole on each side, put the nut down where we want it and then tape measure across it. Got more of this than us? All right guys, it's story time. I made a funny little screw up with these joints. I had ordered these from Barnes to make this new linkage and they're awesome, but I accidentally ordered the tie rod ones. They're seven eighths by 18 threads per inch and I need seven eighths by 14 threads per inch. So they're not gonna work. Well, this one already has the right things, but it's just too long. So then I can just cut it down and weld one new one in there and throw that up there. So I was going to make this new one with these crappy three quarter ones just to get me by. But like literally the entire joint is outside of the tube. It ends right there. And that whole bit that slides inside of there is hollow and the joints are smaller. So I said to hell with that, I'll keep those on the shelf for something else. So I chopped this down and I'm gonna try to cut the old weld out. Bam. I don't think I could have did that twice if I tried. Look at that, it's almost like I knew what I was doing there. Now if I just had a turntable, I need to hire a kid to spin this for me while I weld it. She may only get 11 miles per gallon, but I could be green too. I just saved this steering joint from going straight to the dump by being a precision grinder. And now I'm like reducing and reusing and recycling and I don't have to buy more shit and I'm saving the planet. And you should too. Remember now, it's always perfectly fine when you're too lazy to walk out to your car for the welding helmet and just go ahead and use the safety squints. It ain't gonna hurt nothing. Except for when you miss. Well, short of getting her aligned, we're coming all the way hitting there and we're almost hitting on the front. Now, some people might say that that's a problem with that being right over there. You know, we're gonna move this steering box forward an inch 
If I get rid of this stupid washer, it looks like an inch might get us just able to squeak by it. And if not, then we're just gonna have to modify it a little bit and move it farther than an inch. Cause this is where it's going, damn it. All right, I went ahead and welded this up and now we're gonna align this and then we'll work on grinding those nubs down to make the travel equal. So I decided that before I do anything too permanent, I'm gonna take the steering box off because I need to relocate it. So I just started that and well, let's just say it's gonna be a little more work than I thought. I ended up getting most of these loose, but these two that go up into the bottom frame and there's like a captive nut or a welded nut and they both spun. So I'm gonna end up having to cut the heads off and I'll probably have to open up a hole in the side of the frame in order to get the crap out of there and weld a new nut on there. Which sucks, but it's whatever, it was kind of expected. I didn't realize my camera had stopped on me, so I didn't catch most of that, but there it is. It's barely sitting here right now. With it where it was, I couldn't get these loose. I mean, I got the one loose, but not this one. I didn't want to round it, so I decided just to drop it and I'll leave it be. I had a really hard time getting that yoke off the end of there for the steering shaft. I was pushing on it and the collapsible joint is down in there somewhere and I could never get this steering shaft to collapse. Okay guys, another thing we're gonna do is I'm gonna change out this bearing here for the steering column. Um, I've had it on hand for like a really long time. So every time I would loosen this bolt to try to do it, I couldn't get it to pull off of here. But like now, I since I have it unhooked down at the steering box, I've already slid it over half an inch just by hand. So I'm gonna get it the last little ways and we'll go ahead and do that. And then I'm gonna work on freeing up the slip joint. So all I did was tap a screwdriver in there and now this is cast, so you don't wanna do that too hard. That's enough to where it's pretty good and free though. It just fell out of there for me. So there's a better idea of what I'm talking about as far as this slip joint. These U-joints actually, other than being really stiff, they don't feel super hogged out or anything. So I had to run to the old farm and fleet. And we had to go get the old metric 18 millimeter line wrench so that I could get these stupid fittings. I got one of them loose last night. The other one wasn't cooperating. I, I just didn't want to round off the head. I've done that a time or two and it sucks balls. So I'll use it once probably. I kind of have this just sitting here hanging on by a thread. So hopefully it doesn't fall. Oh, Jesus. Oh boy, I'm gonna bust a nut trying to get that fucker off of there. I might have to heat her up. Oh no, it's going to round it anyway? Wow. I've been spraying this with PB Blaster for three freaking days and I just rounded it with a line wrench. I really don't recommend heating this up because there's seals and bearings in here, but I got to get this thing off of here. So now for my next move that I don't recommend, we're gonna set the old vice grips on kill mode. My little trick for doing that to make sure they don't slip is I set them so tight that you couldn't possibly squeeze them closed by hand, but you can squeeze them closed with a lever. Oh, that is on there, my friends. Did I say don't try this at home yet? Put this down on here. Oh, look at that. Mint. Just like I said, don't try this at home. And then to get this off of there, you just do the same thing. Okay guys, none of this stuff was really going together right. As you can see, I've actually got the high steer on right now. But it got really kind of crazy and I, was, I felt like I was recording for nothing because nothing was going together right. So I kind of skipped a few steps. So I'm going to fill you in on where we're at right now and what I'm about to do. 
Okay, so I went ahead and dropped the steering box and I've got it temporarily back in there with my relocation bracket. So it has moved itself one inch forward and actually a little bit down. I did a few more things. I actually took the one inch spacer out of these, lowered it back down. And the reason was when I tried this before, I wasn't clearing the leaf springs, but I didn't have these thick misalignments in there. You don't really need misalignments on a tie rod. So now that I added those, that allowed me to move everything down, which will help my clearance right here a little bit. So speaking of that clearance, that's as close as it ever gets. When you turn to either side, it actually opens up quite a bit. I wish it would stay that far. Uh, with the wheel straight, I mean, if it's gonna miss, it's gonna miss by a sliver. But with leaf springs, when you when you stuff a tire, specifically this side, which is when it will get closer, the axle moves forward a little bit as the shackle swings forward. And so I just, I don't think it's gonna clear all the way. If not, I may end up having to modify this a little bit and move it farther forward. And I did twist off both of these bottom bolts. So I actually had to cut a door out of here and build a new nut plate and I welded it all back shut. So pretty much I'm at the stage right now of needing to flex this out to figure out how bad this is gonna hit, but I can't do that in my garage. I just don't have the height. Option 32 is to go to a flat pitman arm that would be way up here. And actually I think the stock Wagoneer pitman arm is flat. I went with a drop arm. So the drop Wagoneer arm is about the same as the stock YJ arm. So really the only thing I can do to move forward is to finish getting the radius. I need to grind some of these front steering stops off. I ground some off of the back ones and made them level with the front, but like an idiot, I didn't have my alignment right. I had them hitting at exactly the same time, like the back on here and the front over there. Well, it's not anymore. So I just had a little bit of an aha moment and I've heard a thousand times, use a Wagoneer Pitman arm. Well, I did, but I bought the drop arm because I wanted it a little lower. I didn't want that like super steep drag link angle. But let me tell you why I didn't think this through. Let me show you this. Okay, so it's been like a week and I went out and bought this, which is a Wagoneer stock arm and it has a lot less drop on it. The reason I did that, and I traced them out on here, this simulates the angle the box comes down on. So I thought, oh geez, if I go up closer to a flat one, it moves not just up, but forward also. So I thought I'd gain you know, from here to there clearance, which I did, but it wasn't enough. So these are like six and a half to six and three quarters long from hole to hole. The YJ one is like five and a quarter. So the dotted line simulates that and that's about the minimum clearance I need. So you see it still sticks out farther. So what I did now is went out and bought a flat pitman arm. So let's just pretend this is that and see. So I don't know if that's right or not, but so that would be a six inch hole, which would be kind of split the difference between here and here. So I should get more steering angle than this, but obviously it won't stick out as far. And that was five and three quarters. And I lined this up on there and traced the ends of them out. So you can see that's the stock YJ arm and it should be further that way than this. So now I have to wait for that one to come in. So yeah, because of that kind of stuff and just not knowing what all is gonna work, it's making this take forever. So I'm gonna wrap this video up here and I'll show you why. All my hydro assist stuff came in. This is a rebuild kit for the steering box because when I drill and tap it, I don't really want to leave the metal shavings in it. I know some people do it that way, but I don't wanna do it that way. And there's my ram and my hoses, fittings, chafe guard stuff. So I definitely have a ton of work to do and I'm gonna jump on that and that'll all be in a different video. I hope this helped any of you guys out that have ever wanted to do this to your steering and you weren't sure how to make it all fit. This kind of shows you like how I'm working through this process, figuring it out. Stick around for the next couple of videos. They're also gonna be about all this steering and I might even build a front truss to mount my ram off of. Anyway, thanks for watching. Sub to the channel, hit the like button, and I'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.